Hi everyone, hope that you can hear me. Um, welcome back to the career track. We've got lots of people joining us again. Sorry for the delay there. We just give an extra couple of minutes for everybody to join in the track. Um, so I'm really, really pleased to announce our next speaker. So we've got Paula Adesa, and she's gonna be talking to us about future-proofing our career for the next decade. So Bicola, when you're ready, um, please switch your camera on and your microphone and join me on stage here. Perfect, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. So really excited to have you with us today, Bicola, and I'm gonna switch off my camera and microphone and just let you get started. So I'll pop back on again when we've got about five minutes left and that'll give everybody a chance to switch room again, depending on what track they would like to go to after this talk. So take it away, Bicola, and enjoy everybody. Great. Good evening, everyone. Um, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Um, it is uh, with great pleasure that I am here to present this to you. Um, I've really enjoyed um, being at the conference and I love the interactive platform. I think is is absolutely phenomenal. We only have a very short time, um, literally 20, 25 minutes. And what I want to do with this session is really give you some of the tips that we've been giving and helping our community with as a result of a lot of them having to think differently about their careers as we navigate 2020 together. So a, a bit of an introduction about me. My name is Bukola Adisa. I am the founder and, and Career Masterclass is a career development platform that helps people navigate and progress their career. So we do that through um, masterclasses, bringing instru um, expert instructors to people, um, providing resources, helping with CVs, uh, providing access to coaches, and also conference which is a career development conference that helps people over a number of days and gives them access to breakout sessions, inspirational keynotes, and um, other interventions. The stretch conference actually just concluded. We ran it from Thursday to Thursday last week. We had about 1,600 people attend globally, and we currently have a community of about 12,000 people um, globally. So we've been running this for five years. Before I, um, I came on to do career masterclass full-time, I uh, built a career in the city of London. I'm based in, in, in the UK and I've worked at global organizations like ABC, JP Morgan, RBS, Back more recently Barclays, where I was one of the managing directors responsible for the risk and control framework of the bank. So I got to quite a senior level within the banking and sort of financial services industry. But career masterclass is where my sort of true passion had always been and so I came on to do that earlier this year on a full-time basis and the reason why uh, this session is very important is we are now having to think about careers differently the coronavirus pandemic as and the COVID you know the COVID pandemic that we are currently in has meant that a lot of industries have been disrupted a lot of jobs have been lost so many people have been so many people have been made redundant or are in the process of being made redundant and we are all having to think about our careers differently and the thing that we all need to understand and to be made to, to be sort of made aware of is that rules are changed we're talking about the future world of work we're talking about the role and the impact technology and artificial intelligence machine learning data and all of these things, we'll be talking about the impact that we have, that we have on sort of tra tra traditional roles and how they would disrupt these roles. But we've been talking about it in such of an e evolutionary way, like incremental. And now from nowhere, seemingly no, out of nowhere, the coronavirus pandemic has accelerated that pace of change. And so why, when we used to talk about evolution, now we're talking about something that's totally transformational. And it's not all bad news. And I know at the beginning of this year, there was a lot of panic. Um, there was a lot of people that have not looked for jobs, jobs for years, people that have been in one organization and I sort of progressed through the organization or you have been in one industry and you have progressed through that industry. We're now suddenly having to um, navigate the job markets for the first time. We at Career Masterclass saw a lot of people that joined us and people, we have to help people with CVs. And I was saying to someone recently 
um, I was I was approached to help someone who had been in, uh, funny enough, the technology industry, but never had to look for a job because that industry has always been um, sort of very buoyant and very active. And he had been in one company for a long time and suddenly he's been made redundant. And we then had to sort of help look at the CV. And I kid you not, this CV was 13 pages long. And it was 13 pages long and he didn't do a great job of describing his experience, selling himself, and in a very competitive environment where some of the recruiters that we were at telling us that for every job for every job posting that's out there, they are about they are getting about 280 applicants. So that's sort of the average that's that's, that's going on right now. So every job that you see, whether it's on LinkedIn jobs or indeed, get about 280 applicants per role. So the market space is very, very competitive. So what are some of the things that you can do? So I want to focus this um, this session not on just admiring the problem because we are not one to admire the problem. We I want to focus this session on what are the things that you can do? What are the practical things you can do to future-proof your career? That is whether you are in the job market or not. So you can be old, your role is safe, in which case that's great news, your congratulations, but there are still things that we can all be doing to future-proof our career so that whatever happens, whether that's a um, role that is meant to be safe today, then sort of suddenly changes tomorrow. There are, you have some tool, you have, you have some, some uh, things that can help you navigate and can help you get ahead of it. So what are some of the things you can do? What I say to everybody is the first step is everyone, every professional now needs to do what we call a skills audit. And what does that mean? I will break it down. There are three stages to this, um, to this skills audit. A lot of us have just gone through our careers and we've accumulated skills. We've accumulated skills over you know, 17, 20, 25 years. We've accumulated skills. You've just done the job. Some of us can do our jobs with our eyes closed, but we've not looked at our careers from a strategic point of view. A lot of what we do is tactical. I right? you on the shoulder in the office. And if it's an internal move, sometimes you don't even need a CV, depending on how strong your network is. Sometimes you don't even need a CV. Sometimes you can get away with a 10 page or a seven page CV, a CV that is not updated. I know that has been the case for me in the past when I made internal moves, tap the shoulder, uh, and I've just sort of gone through the process knowing that the rule is mine. But the rules have changed slightly. We are now in a position where I would like to take us some time, block out two hours or three hours in your diary, and do what we call a skills audit. The first thing is, the first phase of the skills audit is, what are the skills I currently have? These are the skills that you've accumulated over your career. And don't just go for the hard skills, which is, you know, I can code, I'm a developer, or I'm a finance person, or um, I'm an HR person, I have knowledge of the HR policies and procedures. Also, think about the soft skills, the interpersonal skills, the negotiating skills. The reason why skills are very important is because um, in the future um, there would be a different, there would, we would need a different breed of leaders and a different breed of people that will be needed to lead companies and that's why the skills, the soft skills are important. So skills like communication, skills like skills like collaboration. So just think about all of those skills that you've acquired over a over a long career and how you can list them out so list everything out it doesn't matter how obsolete it is list out all of your skills that you've acquired second phase of your skills audit is now you don't need to conduct some research what are the skills that will be needed in the future and the way to do this is um it's very simple um, and i've gone through with some of my clients just look at some of the roles that are out there that people are applying for today and about people are recruiting for today and look at what are the skills that people are looking for. That will give you a clue as to the relevance of your skills because a lot of us have accumulated skills and some of those skills are obsolete and they are no longer relevant. The way you want to, you, the, the whole purpose of this exercise is you want to come out of it having on one hand all the skills you have and on the other side of the column, all the skills that are needed and you want to do a comparison you want to compare to see are the skills that you have 
the most sought after skills. And there are no slides for this, but there are some two, there are some sort of worksheets and some templates that I will send on the back of this. So for instance, the three stage um, skills framework, there is a template, there's a worksheet, and I would I would send that so that that can be sent out to you. So don't worry about that. Just throw me as I'm as I'm talking. Uh, so just so you want to come out of this exercise thinking about what are the to identify what are the skills that are needed in the future. So for instance, I am a I'm a compliance and an audit risk person, and some of the skills I put in is stakeholder management from a soft skills perspective audit methodology from an ad skills perspective, knowledge of regulations to do with compliance. But there are new regulations that may have come out and they are now um, skills that are required around auditing using software, using um, technology, using um, AI, using machine learning. So if I do not have those skills, then I would quickly recognize that in my for my third phase, that I, there's a gap analysis. So your first phase is identify all the skills you have, Second phase, identify the skills that are needed. And third phase, identify the gaps and plot, have a plan for plotting the gap, for plugging the gap. So you also need to then think about how do I use what I have to get what is needed? Add everything that you have, because there are things that you have today that we call like springboard for the things that are needed. So you need to think about the transferability of your skills. And that leads me to my second point of what I need to future proof your career is to think about what are to identify your transferable skills. So this is not the time for us to be married to any one industry or company. Now, except you work in like work in the NHS or you are or you know, there are some sort of traditional roles where you can only ever use your skills in one that kind of role. If you don't work in those kind of industries, this is the time to look off the beaten track. And one of the, one of the so for, for example, people that work in events management right now, so people that work in um, events management, managing large events and conferences, we know that our industry is not at risk. But all of the skills that you have, which is around project management, budgeting, costing, billing, um, stakeholder management, um, negotiating, all of those skills are not obsolete. You need to think about how do you transfer those skills from um, working as an in, as an as an event manager for, to maybe um, running virtual events or to working in organizations that still run you know digital events or working or run virtual events. So this is a time for us what we call sort of like lateral thinking to think more broadly about yourself. This is where I say to people you need to start seeing yourself as a commodity. You can't see yourself anymore as, you know, I am one person, I only, I've only ever worked in, uh, for example, I've only ever worked in AstraZeneca um, in, you know, and I've, my career is progressing as an AstraZeneca and this is where I will retire. It may well be that all the plans, all the stars you do um, end up working in AstraZeneca for the rest of your life, but we're in a position where nine at an important point in advancement of technology plus what's happening in the environment that's such thinking is, has become really risky. What you want to do is think of yourself as a commodity. Where can my skills be best served? One of the one of the um, one of the ways I advise some of our clients, our members of our community, is I'm not a fan of people that tailor CVs to different roles. You know, people. Some of people. Some people give you an um, advice and say, "Oh, have four different CVs for four different roles." I believe that what you sell is you sell yourself as a professional that has a particular set of skills that can be deployed. So for instance, if you are a project manager and you are a project manager that has always worked in, say, the entertainment industry, and that industry is now in a decline, can you utilize your skills or can you utilize your skills to work in the healthcare industry? That is the way we need to start thinking about ourselves. So you don't see yourself as, I'm a project manager, in the entertainment industry, you see yourself first and foremost as a perfect project manager that has a very set of well honed and well defined skills be deployed into a number of roles. So you can think about, you know, um, and broaden the industries that you want to serve. So maybe moving from entertainment, you can now look at healthcare, you can look at technology, you can look at the software as a service um, organizations, or you can look at public sector. 
Or you can think about it as actually, okay, what other roles can I use? Can I, can I do using my project management skills? So recently I was working with a client who is a very good project manager, but um, I, they, there was no jobs. So I said to them, I said, why can't you, okay, what about things like process improvements? What about business analysts? What about um, project finance? Because they are also had an, an ACC qualification, um, which is a fine sort of an accounting qualification. So this is a time for when you sit down and you can do this with the help of a career coach or you can do it by yourself. And you think about your transferable skills, do the research and identify, have a plan for two to three pivot roles. This is what we call them. Identify what are your two to three pivot roles. You may never need them, but it's good to know that if the worst happens, that you already have a plan to pivot. So even for me, um, every time I, I went, when I was in, at work and I worked in audits, that's what, how I was able to go from audits to compliance, to financial crime, to risk and controls, because at the back of my mind, I had a plan for what are the roles I can pivot into and how do I sell my skills to be able to pivot the next thing um, I want to talk about is plan, plan, and plan. You, we need, we all need to have a plan now. We need to have a pivot plan. Uh, that's what I will call it. So this is where you think about your transferable skills, the skills that you have, and the role you can map into. And it is very, it's a very simple plan. I'm not a fan of plans that run into pages and pages. I believe in a simple one pager, and it is the what, how much, by when. So what is it that you want, how much of it, and by when? And that is as, is as simple as that. So you can have a plan of, I want to transition uh, from a project manager in the entertainment, uh, in the entertainment industry um, to becoming a process improvement analyst in the consumer. And how much of that? So when we say how much of that it is, okay, um, so the what is, I want to transition to become a process improvement analyst in the consulting how much is, um, you know, you, you identify all that relevant in and also be, um, you know, strategy firms, it can be public policy firms, it can be technology firms. So you sort of define that and by when. And who, then the last column is who do you need or what do you need to get it? So that is where you start to identify that you may need to take a course on Udemy, you may need to um, sort of go back and look at your network of people that can help you. It just crystallizes your thinking when you have just that sort of one page plan of the what, how much, by when we need, you need to plan. The thing about this is it gives you power and it makes you, you are in control because it's better for you to change that is anticipated is bet, is a better response to change that happens to you. So when you anticipate change and you have a plan, you are in a better headspace to react to that change then change that is forced upon you. And that is the, the, the that's the, the good thing about a plan. And plans change. So you can every quarter maybe commit to revisiting that plan. As you know more, as you learn more, because we are all discovering things about ourselves, um, you can then adapt that plan based on your interest, based on the economy, and based on what's happening in the in the wider society. The next thing, and this is one thing that's very, very important, especially for women, is networks, connections, and visibility. Men do this a lot better than us. A lot of women that I coach and mentor, this is the one thing that I think they are not as great at doing as the men. Network. That's why this Ada's List conference is worth its weight in gold, and I hope everyone will take advantage of that. You need to, now more than ever, it is true that it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. When you're in a competitive um, environment where, like I said, every road is being pursued by about 280 people, you really want to, you, you want to give yourself a fighting chance by networking your way and building connections that, that serve you. So a lot of us are good at building internal connections uh, in our industries, but we are not as great as building external connections. It's great to build internal connections, but what happens is, is a risky move because the, the, that one person or the people that you're connected to internally could move on. And then what happens to, you, to your network? So it's great to build valuable networks internally and externally. And um, the fact that we are all online and we're all digital has made it a lot easier. 
So what are some of the ways you can start to build these connections? So number one is by attending events like this. When you attend an event like this, put yourself out there. It's a bit risky. And especially if you're maybe more on the introverted side and you're more um, sort of um, a shy person, it can feel risky. But some of the best connections that I have made personally have been at conferences. And I will share a quick story. So um, in June, I attended um, TechCrunch. Um, there was, there's a, I, I know some of you, especially people in the US, will know TechCrunch, which is the, um, um, is, a, is a sort of a media company that sort of follows um, happenings in the, in the tech world. And I attended their early stage conference because we are, you know, we're a startup and we're trying to raise money and all that. And they had something similar to this sort of networking um, rooms where to face conversations with people so and when you network please go big right so if you if you don't there's no if you're going to put yourself out there as a shy person i always say to people you might as well go for gold right and so i thought okay i'm going to coo the crunch the chief operating officer and so i put some time in with him and we had 15 minutes and we had a very good conversation and i just thought you know because um, at the back of my mind I, at that point we were planning the stretch conference and i was recruiting speakers and i thought ask him but you know that thing, that monkey that sits on your shoulder was telling me he's gonna say no. He doesn't know stretch. This, I mean, this is the chief operating officer for TechCrunch. He's gonna say no. He's gonna turn you down. But I was able to quieten down that little monkey, and I thought to myself, well, if he says no, you know, it's no. It's not like he's asked for my firstborn son. He's just said no. So I just asked him, and I said, I would really love you to come on board and to um, be one of our speakers. And he said, absolutely. Send me the um, send me the details. We sent him the details and it was one of our speakers last week and his session was so well received and I've been able to make that you know, connection. So it's very important that you put yourselves out there, you make the connection, use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a treasure trove been overrun by people that post, post sort of fake stories, but just cliff, cut through all of that noise, find the people that you want to engage and just send them a message. Some will say yes, some will say no, but focus on the yeses. And lastly, don't forget your assets. And your assets are your CV and your LinkedIn profile. I know so I know, I know so many people, you don't pay attention to the LinkedIn. It's not up to date. It has the job you did 12 years ago. Um, your CV is sort of gathering dust. This is a time to wrap it up, to refresh it. You may not need it, but remember, change that is anticipated is change that is best responded to. So get your assets up to date, your LinkedIn and your CV, get it up to date so that you are able to respond to that change. And lastly, learn how to tell your story. Learn how to tell your story in a very compelling manner. Learn how to tell the story of your experience. You are not just the sum total of all of the jobs you've done. There's a story that runs through. You have likes, you have interests, you have values. And remember that you are a gift to any organization that works with you because you are talented. So learn how to tell your story, learn how to craft your story, and don't, no matter how desperate you get, don't sacrifice your values. And um, I hope you found that really useful. And like I said, I will send some information, the worksheet around the skills assessment framework. I will send it to Nicola and she'll get it through to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Perfect. Amazing, that was so inspiring. Thank you so much, Nicola, that was incredible. Um, I think we've got a couple of minutes left now, everyone, just to change tracks again. I'm just going to let you know what's coming up in each track now. Um, so if you stay here, you're going to have Dr. Kalila Jones. She's talking about from agency to AI tech company, how one digital agency went from service to product-based business. Um, if you switch over to the restructure panel, you've got Cassie Myers, the need for anti-racism at work. And then in tech, we've got two blockchain slots with Diane Yudono and Jean-Vive Leviel. Um, so again, just a massive thank you to Bukola Adisa, and I'll give you all a couple of minutes now to change track. Um, thanks again so much, Bukola, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye.